I love you, not because of who you are, but because of who I am when I'm with you, so says Banis. Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. It is yet another exciting day here for unraveling a new smartwatch. Banis has sent us a third of their line of watches to take a look at, and this one, <laughs> I think this one's going to be very interesting. Here it is. And what is it exactly? Well, let's take a look. It's, it's a watch. And, whoa, it's really in there. Okay. It's like really sealed good. Look at this. It's like armor all around it. The button, why, you know, you look at this and you might even think it could possibly be Waterproof. I mean, not just waterproof, but IP68 waterproof. We're looking at a very interesting watch. This one, you see on the back, has not only um, your heart rate monitor and your charging dock uh, contacts, but a little opening that you can put a SIM card in. That means, as a tethering watch with SIM card capability, this is a dual-mode watch. It can tether to your phone, and it can operate standalone with a SIM card in water with bands that, well, we'll find out, look removable. Okay, I'm supposed to peel this thing off. It looks like there's a protective plastic on here, but it's not coming up, so I'm just going to take the thing off and we'll check that later if that's actually the screen or there's a screen protector on there but um, we have something here that may be the connector for the charging dock that goes across there there's one button there's a little hole that's it there's like screws around hold the whole thing in and then there's this compartment that you open to put the sim card in there's another little hole there or is that the same hole, huh? <laughs> there we go. Well, all right. What else is in the box? Banis has a nice way of packaging two sides to the box. One side has the charging unit. Whoa, that's pretty sophisticated. Instead of a little magnetic coupler thing, because you're going to be swimming with this thing, it's, it's more ruggedized. We're going to slap that in there and snap that in there. And we have bridged the contacts with a USB connector for charging, which uh, is just a standard USB. You could use a different cable if you want to, or you can use this nice pretty one that they supplied with it. Okay, charging dock pops right off. That's in the box. And... Oh, I'm doing this all off camera. I'm sorry. There we go. We've got a book, not a manual. We've got a book. It's a tri-proof HRM smartwatch Sultra user's guide. Please read it carefully. All righty then. Here you go. Read it all you want. I'll let you walk through this. Wow. Whole book. All about battery charging. APK download and instruction. So you can download uh, fun, fundu, Funduware, which is the app for interfacing with your watch and your phone. There's some more information on all of that. How you do it if you're an iOS user. Several pages in here. This looks relatively well written too. You don't have to try to do a Google Translate on the translation of Chinese. They actually put some thought into putting this book together. It's very sophisticated, very impressive. Okay, it looks like it has Siri support, information about the heart rate monitor, waterproof test and installation notes. Okay. That's uh, making sure that you re-waterproof the watch. Wow, complete with pictures. Look at that. How to open it up, put the SIM in. It looks like it's a nano SIM. It looks pretty tiny, so you might need a nano SIM on here. Warranty card and um, Sultra. 
in Chinese. There's the rest of the manual all in Chinese. Okay, so we've got ourselves an interesting watch. Do you want to turn it on, see what it does? Well, first of all, by way of summary, I got this sheet here for you. Okay, we are looking at the B2 IP68 waterproof watch. Here's all the hardware specifications. It's a 240 by 240 pixel IPS screen. Touch screen is waterproof capacitive touch. That should be interesting. Micro SIM, okay, it says it's a micro SIM. 300 milliamp hour battery, and here's all of the standby and stuff, and all of the things that it's got in it. But it does say that it is waterproof, so I'm going to turn it on under water. Okay, <laughs> in celebration of hitting our one millionth channel view today, I hereby christen you a smartwatch. I hope it's a waterproof smartwatch. The uh, B2, not the B4, and not the B after, but the B2 is now submerged lightly in water as we turn it on to see what it'll do. It's booting up. Hey, it played sound. Okay, we're on. We've got already it bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Probably because of the water stream, huh? Look at that. So maybe I shouldn't just be... Um, Wow, I think I think it's turning itself on and putting itself on Bluetooth. Power on. No, not yet. Uh, let's cancel. Okay, it's supposed to be like capacitive, but I think with uh, water spilling on it, it might not be working exactly like we planned. So let's get back out of here. But look at that. It's still sensitive. Okay, we've got uh, different watch screens. Sorry about the overhead reflections. This is not the environment I'm used to doing this in, obviously. And there's a... that's actually an orange screen. It's coming out white um, here. Okay, I've turned the overhead lights on to try to get a little bit better contrast. As we dive into this, I'm going to just not spill water on it like this because that doesn't seem to work well on the display. It's thinking its finger touches. What I am going to do, though, is jack it up and fill it with water, and then we will play with it underwater. How's that? Let's come back to the main screen. Just too much intensity with the water coming on it. All right, that should be good. We're underwater. I'm pressing the button to take us back. Mm, there we go. Okay. You see the pretty orange screen now? Good. Uh, press and hold. Uh, no. Not getting response underwater. So, although it's a capacitive, waterproof display, it is not activatable underwater. That would be a stretch, wouldn't it? All right. But if we bring it out, let's try it from here. Okay. It doesn't really need to be dried off. Works pretty good there. And there. So we are going to run through this, but you know what? I'm not going to do it underwater like I planned. It's just going to be a little bit difficult, and the lighting's just not right. So I'm going to head back over there, but I want to submerge it, and I want to turn it off, if I can. And we can listen to what it sounds like underwater, at least. Okay, you can hear it underwater. Nice. All right, let's go back on dry land. So, booting back up again, one thing we want to talk about is the fact that... The fact that it's really loud! I think that's good, though. Outdoors in the water, I like loud. That works well. Um, it is a tethering watch, which means that you're going to be able to activate Bluetooth and connect it directly to your cell phone. And 
make and receive calls from this watch through your phone. Or put in the SIM card and do it directly. Oops, still some water. Do it directly from the, the watch itself without needing your phone at all. That's what we mean by dual mode. Okay, let's see what we've got in here. Let's walk through these apps. We've got a, a four of them per square, and we're starting with phone books. So if you're connected and you are tethered, you will have Bluetooth a listing of all of your contacts that are in your phone directory. However, we're not right now, so I'm at local. And I could add a new contact local, which would then be available to the SIM card directly. That's an indicator when you got a dual mode uh, type of a device. You have these two options in there. The dialer, put in your phone number and dial it. Emergency numbers only, it says, and that's, I guess, you have to have a SIM. I don't sure. Maybe, maybe you can dial without a SIM even. Your call logs, if you've made calls, local or Bluetooth. Okay, local meaning direct from the SIM, Bluetooth meaning your call logs from your phone. And then messages, write messages, inbox, and so forth. Uh, we've seen these on other tethered watches, and I'm not connected, so we're not going to go all through that just to show you. Bluetooth music allows you to play the music that's on your watch through, oh, sorry, on your phone through your watch if you're connected. And then there's the remote capture, which will allow you to take a picture uh, from your watch of whatever your camera is pointing at on your phone, either on Android or iOS. This basic software that you're seeing is the same across the board for all the uh, Banis watches. And so if you've seen the other reviews, you've seen this. Um, Bluetooth connection is how you would set this up for iPhone or search for a new device if it's Android. And uh, Bluetooth is not connected for us to do the remote notifier feature either, but that's available. Now we get into the stuff the watch can do on its own. It's got its own built-in pedometer, so you can count your steps. It's got a sleep monitor, right? And it's got the heart rate monitor, which is in the back. If we say start, it says it's measuring. Got the little green diode. Let's see if it'll work. It should. Whether it works underwater, don't know. How well it works underwater, don't know. But it works and this uh, information could be then sent to your phone using the uh, Fundu Wear app. And if you're using this uh, when you're out swimming and you switch to one of the other watches um, when you're uh, on dry land and it uses the same app that this one does, all of your data for your heart rate will still be there. So that's pretty cool. Your basic sedentary reminder, we've seen that in all of the different watches where you can set it up to remind you to get up and move around. This one has a stopwatch in it, so you can actually time it to tenths of a second. And you find your device if you're, whoops, I'm jumping ahead, a calculator, a basic calculator we've seen on the other watches. Your alarms, that you can add alarms set the times, all that stuff. Find your phone. Uh, when you start this, it'll beep your phone that you're tethered to so you can locate the device. And your quick response is the barcode that you need to scan in order to download uh, or get access to the app. But I, I can tell you, you could just go to the Google Play Store and look for the Fundu, F-U-N-D-O, where is the name of it, and download uh, Funduware, and that's the app that you'd be doing anyway. There. You've got a calendar, which basically shows you the day of the week or the month view. The dates are all wrong because we haven't set up or synchronized this, but that's what the calendar looks like. Then you have the Siri interface, which also works for um, the Android's uh, OK Google kind of connection. <laughs> There goes one of my devices over there. I tell you, the house is, is something. I say that magic phrase and everything lights up if it's if it's set in recognize mode. Sorry about that. Anyway, Siri or uh, the OK thing will, will work and it will cause your phone that you're connected to to respond to you. 
This is the main user interface one and two. I haven't seen this before. Okay, it looks like that changed everything to white. And that keeps it in kind of a orange color. And I guess that's sort of like theme that we see on other watches. And then we have file manager. For the tiny amount of memory that you have in the watch, you have free, what is it, about one megabyte? One megabyte now, not gigabyte, but one megabyte. And not even sure why we have a file manager, because we don't have a camera on this one, so there wouldn't be a reason other than, I don't know, maybe putting music on or something. There's a power savings option, which we can turn on or off which might time this out too quick for me, so I'm turning it off. And then, of course, there's settings. And running through settings, you have the Bluetooth power on visibility that lets you connect to your phone, uh, the clock that lets you um, select which clock face you want, synchronize the time, and if the synchronization is on, you cannot set the 12, 24-hour mode. You have to time sync it off like that, and then you could, of course, set your date and time manually. Wow, it's not letting me scroll too easily. There we go. At the bottom is the time format. I typically like it in 12 hour. And then if you turn time sync on, it will synchronize when you're on Bluetooth. Um, and it'll stay in the 12 hour format. Just a little trick you got to do. Sound is uh, the different types of alerts that we have. We have a ring only vibrate vibrate and ring, or the cool one, vibrate first, then ring if you don't respond to the vibration. The different ring tones you can have. Sorry. So that would be your phone ringtone, first one. is surprisingly loud. Okay, I think the volume may be cranked all the way up as well. It's almost distorting, but that's ringtones. Then notification tones are different. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, okay, I get it. It's like a rabbit, huh? There's tone four. So you got to think you want sounds that are going to be easy to hear in a wet environment. And I can see why they're doing that. So good and loud and volume is where we control that. And multimedia volume was set at 5. It could still go even higher. It could go to 6. Ring is already up to 6. Notification was up to 6. So they were cranked up pretty loud. And uh, because of that, they tend to be distorted, I think. So I'm just going to bring them down a little bit. There. Isn't that clearer? And still you can hear it. There you go. Okay, things to play with, sound and volume, display, the uh, main menu style we're coming back to, brightness I have set at one. This is the lowest it'll go. If I crank it higher, it's gonna blow out the camera and you wouldn't even be able to read this, let alone, hello camera, staying in focus. There we go. Ah, oh, 
Come here, you. We were in display. Um, screen timeout is way too f fast for me. I'm going to go to 60 seconds right now. And then the main style, you notice we had four apps in a square. Because this thing could be a big thing underwater with one big button, you can go to where you have apps as just one on the screen. Instead of uh, four. It takes a whole lot longer to find what you're looking for, but if you're having trouble trying to touch the button, you might want to just have one single app there. That would work well for you that way. This is the last one we're reviewing, so I can just leave it like that. Aye, come here. I have sweaty and wet fingers. Uh, that was display motion. This is the stuff where you can have it, uh, so you flip it or shake it or do other things with it. Um, flip to mute incoming calls. That would just be turn it all up to stop a call from coming in to mute it. Flip to mute the alarm. If you want that, you could turn it on. The wake up gesture, um, which is the one I like. That's when you turn it and it'll show you the time. You don't have to touch anything. Shake, switch, main menu. That will bring up the main menu so you can switch it. Is that the last one? No. Nope. And then shake to answer a call if you would like. Uh, that way, if you are like working on your car and under your carburetor or fuel injector and you got your ability to just shake your arm, you could answer a call coming in. Then the magic voice, which is very interesting. You can um, mask your voice, I guess is a word, or change it. So normal is none. Or you can sound like a man or a woman or a child. I have not used this, and I don't know if it's just with the SIM card or you can do this technique with the uh, Bluetooth tethering. If I find out, and I probably will test this all out, I'll either do a video on it or check in the show notes down below and um, play with Magic Voice. At least one of the other uh, watches from Banas has that feature as well. So it's something that's part of their software. Flight mode. You know, it's like putting your watch in flight mode, so it's uh, turning off all of your connectivity. International allows us to look at all of the different languages that we have available. And here's the display. Ayah, international. Languages. Not a whole lot, but that's the list. Ayah, don't get me... Don't get me to where I don't know where I'm at because I don't know the language. <laughs> Back to English. Thank you. Uh, last name first, first name last if you want. When you turn auto sync on, it will lock your language into the language of your phone. So you only have to change it on your phone. It will change and update on your watch. And apps allows you to uh, work with downloaded apps that you can do once you tether to the FunDoWare app on your phone. In other words, you can link Bluetooth through your phone to access an app store to download things like a weather app and other stuff to your watch that's maintained, I guess, by Banis on their server. And um, these type of apps you can install. Not the Google Play Store kind. This is not a full-on Android watch, but you can download those apps. Reset the whole watch if you want to. And finally, the About which tells us our device address information, our connected service, our version, and the release notes to say that this was the firmware on March 8th of 2016. And there you go. Okay, how many of you guys remember this one? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. I've been wanting to do this for years. Are we ready? My little Alka-Seltzer test with a watch. Come back here. Uh, chopsticks. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into the ring. Hello. Ring. It's doing it. It's still playing. Oh, to heck with chopsticks. Oh, 
Oh, this is just too cool. I'm going to have fun with this watch. <laughs> See you guys later.